Now, let's actually take a look at a very advanced topic. And again, we're in remote learning because we're in a wonderful little pandemic or at the ending portion of it. We'll, we'll see, Delta variants and whatnot. But let's say it wouldn't be a data visualization course without some type of visualization of disease spreading or infection spreading. So in this instance, I've got a, all of this already built out just to show and kind of walk through what we're working off of. So to even begin, we're starting with some of our basic libraries, a random library, so we can just have a little randomness to there, NumPy, because we're gonna actually need it, uh, math, because we're gonna be doing the distance formula, so square roots, but the really important part here is this kind of slew of information you're seeing going on here. So I'm importing matplotlib, I'm importing a uh, subplot, uh, or sub portion of matplotlib again, instead of it being pyplot, I'm actually importing animation. Because again, if we're trying to simulate something over time, or you know, time means we need to represent at different time cycles. And for that, we're gonna use something called function animation or func animation. Then uh, I am adding in just a little bit more, for example, this ipython.display. Uh, since we're doing a visualization, uh, Jupyter will not just automatically show the visualization, so we're going to have to like force it to do that. And so we've got you know that also imported in. Now I do have some extra little functionality going on here. For example, RGB to float. When we get to a certain portion, I'll acknowledge we have to convert our RGB values into a floating point number from zero to one. Um, but that's really weird when we're trying to just represent those as colors. So I'm building a little function here that'll just do that quickly for me. Uh, and in fact, that's actually where some of my parameters are coming in. So population size, let's just do a thousand people, uh, the height and width of sort of my visualization. So 500 by 500 square. Uh, red and blue are going to represent our people. Red will represent someone is infected and blue someone is not infected. So these are just uh, some RGB values that I got from flaticolors.com. And then I'm just going to work off of an infection rate of 5%. You have a 5% if you come in contact with someone with the infection you have a 5% chance of getting the infection. Nothing terribly crazy. We're not going into like Oh, what, what happens when they recover, or they become immune, just starting with the most basic version of that. So to start, I'm first just generating where each one of the population individuals, participants in our little simulation, are going to appear. So I have two values, positions, which is a list of their XY coordinates, and then status, which is going to be whether or not they are a red or blue person. Then going through all thousand people, generate some random XY position from zero to 500 and do that for both X and Y. Okay, so this is just a, a little quick, you know, when you're dealing with randomizing data, um, you know, just storing that in your list and checking to see if it is, if it is randomly generate a new piece. In this case, I don't want two people in the same spot that doesn't physically happen you can't stand on a per you can stand on a person anyways but uh just a quick while now this technically could produce theoretically this could produce an infinite loop but since we're dealing with random how possible is it to randomly generate uh the same location twice uh you know uh doing it uh in an infinite number of times again theoretically possible app uh realistically not so much uh you know it may happen like once or twice so uh either way once i've established an x and y uh coordinate that is not currently in use i will go ahead and do it and add it into positions then i'm again i'm just doing a check let's see who already starts with it just to you know inject it in so uh generating a random number from zero to one uh and if that is below my infection rate so if it's below five percent you're infected uh, and I am keeping a tally just so I can have sort of a know of how many people started with my infection. So then I've just got some visualizations going on here. That's the same number. Uh, so let me actually get rid of that. So let's go ahead and run that first one. Boom. Take that second one. Boom. And you see that we initially have uh, 62 people uh, infected out of our thousand. Okay, fair enough. 
This is just more of a, when I'm sort of working off of large data sets, I like to throw in these little cells here where, just show me five, just show me five values so I have a good feeling of what's going on here. Okay, so the positions of the first five are those. That, all That's all it's doing for me, but that's, you know, it tells me my data is being generated properly. Now, when we're dealing with a scatter plot diagram, one of the things you might remember is that we need an X value, which is the X axis values, and a Y value, which is the Y value values. Since I'm dealing with sort of the entries uh, as X and Y in one lump, uh, so instead, I do need to do some fancy uh, Python magic, and that's what this is. What I'm effectively saying here is first, convert my list into an NP array. Then, from that entire array, extract out the zeroth column. Uh, so in this case, again, that's exactly what that does, takes out them, uh, and so we can prove this. So again, that zeroth column should be 26, 24, 300, uh, 453, 8, 190, or 189. That's exactly what we see. I'm doing it again with the Y coordinates, and we can confirm that those are also there. So now what we're going to do, and you can already see I've got a little text coming in here as well. I'm just going to just show a visualization to start. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can see I'm building I am technically still using the subplots, but since I'm only using, I'm not using, uh, I'm only using one row, one column, uh, same kind of thing again, just with my prior video, uh, X is not an array or it's not a dictionary, it's just the one single plot. We kind of have to do this for some of the fancier magic later, uh, but then I'm coming in and this is again that uh, RB, RGB to floats doing that as well, so we establish that those are now, instead of them being the tuples of integers, they're now tuples of floats. I am adding in a little text point here, a axe.text, and so same kind of thing with a PLT, or a, I mean, sorry, a plot, a pie, or a scatter. Text is just going to add a text. Where? Uh, well, zero, zero represents, uh, put it at the bottom left corner. It's not going to be the cleanest, but it gets the job done for a visualization. And then we'll just say, oh, this is the initial point. Then, as you can see, I'm doing scatter. Now, one thing you might notice is I'm saving those as variables. When we were working off of them uh, previously, so when we were working off of, say, for example, this value, or rather, let me show the pie chart one. That'll show it. It's sort of producing, it's just going and magically and printing out those values, well, we're going ahead and saying, let's save them uh, into variables. And the reason why is we're going to have to update them and manipulate them later. So again, if we take this and we run it, we see uh, some little red dots every once in a while that's indicating where our infected uh, individuals are in our space. So again, this is just a little text saying that. Uh, for if you're you know, looking at the, uh, the notebook. Now I do have two specific uh, sort of functions that I'm working off of here. Distance, it's the traditional distance formula. Uh, so again, given two points, put it somewhere. Update position. I'll draw this out actually just for a quick second. So the entire idea to uh, update position. What I'm working off of is, if I think about this is where my person is, right? Well, we can think about this as sort of its own little tiny x, y plane. And again, this will just sort of be a very rudimentary drawing to this. But I want to say, I want my participants, my individuals, to be able to move. So the way I'm looking at it is I want to produce sort of a direction that they can move from and a radius to that. So I've got this giant circle again, you know, just thinking about them uh, as a particular step. So if I wanted to go here, well, that's technically just a radius. And so my end game is I need to take that radius and I need to find specifically to change the color again, I need to find 
where that x value is, so where that x value is, and where that y value is. And once I find out that point, you know, again, if I'm thinking about this as a moving, I want my person to move to this new location. So once again, there we are. That's what I'm doing. I take my XY position that I'm currently at, there we are. Then I'm randomly generating just a direction. Just pick a number from zero to 360. That's gonna be where we're kind of working off of. Um, I probably don't need to be doing that much, but that's just, it works, so. Uh, and then I'm doing a simple little mathematical calculation. I am just arbitrarily stating that they're moving two steps. Uh, I could have made this another random, so someone traveled far distances, I just said two. But I'm again, since I'm working off of a circle, uh, math.sign, convert that zero to 360 into radians, uh, so it'll tell me sort of a, a good spot to work off of. Uh, and then I take wherever my X and my Y were, and I'm adding that to that position. So in theory, it'll, update the XY. Now we get to the meat and potatoes and you can see I've got a lot of text here going on here. What happens is when we think about sort of a simulation, just to bring this back up, when we think about a simulation, we are operating off of time and time constantly moves forward. So Wherever my point is, let's call this, you know, T1, just to be fancy, wherever my point is, well, the next time cycle or time step you'll see a lot, uh, I want my point to be somewhere else. So in this case, I want it to be maybe up here. Uh, and then, you know, for time cycle three, maybe up here. And so at each one of these time cycles, we're effectively producing a new visualization. So I want to see this visualization, I wanna see this visualization, and this visualization. So what we're working off of when we're building out something like an animation is I need to make each of these individual frames. So to do this, no, no, <laughs> no. there we are. To do this, I'm going in. And one of the things we have to take note is I have to go through every single person. So everyone in my uh, simulation has to be updated. So again, uh, I'm going in and I'm doing a four I in the population for all thousand people. Get my specific location or my individual location and then update that position. So I'm saying move before infect. You could do the opposite way, but I that's the position that I chose. Then I'm getting my status. Okay, fair enough. Then something that we can sort of enjoy here is I don't care about any other instance if you are not infected. If you moved, you moved, awesome. I only care if you are infected because then I gotta see if you spread. So if you are uh, a red, you're an infected uh, individual, guess what I have to do? Well, there are a number of different points that are in my population size. Unfortunately, I have to go through each one of these points. There may be cleaner ways to do this, but I'm just going to say, well, now go through the entire population again to see who you, who you can potentially infect. So again, for J in population size and get their location. Then I'm doing just some, since we're doing a large number of traversings, a uh, thousand by a thousand, uh, I'm doing some quick things. If I'm, if my I and J are the same, AKA if I'm the same person, skip it. I, I, you can't infect yourself, you're already infected. And then secondly, I am just checking, well, is that person already infected? Again, they are already infected, can't infect them again. So if that's possible, skip, uh, move on. Then as you can see, I'm doing a distance. Uh, I'm checking for 10, I had it at six, I've had it at different numbers, but you know, you could say, for example, just to make the joke there, uh, six feet. Uh, if you are closer than six feet, then let's roll the dice. 
generate a random number, zero to one, and if that is less than the infection rate, well, guess what? You have just swapped from being uh, clean or negative to a positive. You're now a uh, infected party, crap. So that is just on sort of the mathematical side, right? All of this uh, looping was just to, again, update locations and statuses then we have to actually update the visualization. And to do that, again, this is where uh, it's a little funky, I won't lie. It took me a, a, a few minutes of working through this and debugging uh, and whatnot. First thing, if you wanna update those positions, this is one of the reasons why we saved the scatter plot diagram earlier as a variable, because we're gonna reference it. We're gonna say, take scatter and in our case of updating the XY coordinates, update or set offsets, and that'll change the XY positions. Then, since we're dealing with sort of this visualization of colors, this I will go ahead and just say, this took me down a rabbit hole because apparently that's not just as easy as it, it looks. Uh, and I acknowledge this with the variable naming, but uh, to change colors, in a scatter plot diagram, an animated scatter plot diagram on matplotlib, you use set face colors. Now, this is actually why I have to do this uh, RGB to floats uh, variable, is because set face values, these have to be a tuple of floats. If they are not a tuple of floats, it doesn't work. Why? Uh, because I didn't invent matplotlib, and whoever is working on set face colors has not modified it as of this video. Either way, uh, then just a quick little, the next thing I'm going in with is uh, the text is changing to the new iteration. Uh, and then one of the things that I have to do as part of the animation function for the func animation uh, process is say, what updated. Uh, this is, again, for the internals of matplotlib to understand, oh, this is what needs to be updated and whatnot. Okay, well, we take that and where we leave off. So let's load that into memory. So now we officially have everything in place. And so it's time to now work on actually making the animation. And to do that, again, we're using funk animation. So to break down every single one of the pieces, parts that are going on here, the first thing I'm giving it is fig. Again, what is the visual that we're working off of? Uh, animate, which is in this case telling uh, funk animation, what is the uh, update function that you want to happen at each time cycle or frame? Then I'm saying how many frames I want to work off of. And again, as you can see, it's frames equal uh, because this is where we start getting into the special keywords. So I'm saying do 200 iterations, 200 frames, and interval. Interval is now specifying, well, what kind of delay do you want between each one of your frames? And in this case, this is a millisecond approach. Uh, so I'm just saying have 100 milliseconds going on there. Now, FARGs. Fargs is saying what additional values you need to give your update function. If I did not have this, the only thing it would be expecting is iteration, but I'm also passing in position and status as well. Uh, so I'm giving those to it. And then blit. Blit is just, it's again, it's some of the internals going on with matplotlib to say, oh, well, you know, this is gonna optimize it and speed up the entire process. So we take this and we'll run it. Now we've just set the animation. We haven't made the visual as you can see, it's not doing anything. But okay, well, I'm going to, I think this actually, this'll, I move some things around for the video, but that should stay the same roughly speaking, or one got updated, I guess, uh, for that initial step. But uh, the entire idea here, let me actually, edit, cut, edit, uh, paste above. There we are. So now there comes a place where we have a visualization. We have an animation that we want to look at. We have two approaches. We can either put it as a little graphic in our Jupiter, if we are working off of Jupiter, 
or as you can see we can also save it and I'll talk about the saving in just a little bit but as you can see this is where that HTML comes into play we take our animation and there's a function for funk animation uh, to HTML5 video and it will inject the video into our player now this is going to take a second it will process for some time uh, but to just at least show that off so we don't have to wait for it when it saves, uh, this is the visualization that you'd be getting. So as you can see, the points are floating and as time and iterations go on, the spread is happening. So congratulations, you can see. And again, this will take some seconds, so I'm gonna leave it running uh, until that happens. Please, by all means, start hitting the arrow or the L key to skip ahead, uh, because again, this is going to take some time. And in fact, while it's happening, uh, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and explain. So with animation save, again, uh, we're specifying the file name. So in this case, I'm calling it uh, simulation and giving it the file extension MPV or MP4. Ah, oh, there we are. So here we are with that visualization. This is actually one of the reasons why, uh, as you can see, the quality is not that great. Uh, that's mostly, again, Jupyter just, uh, and Matplotlib, making sure things stay minimal. So you can see there is some uh, growth going on there. And as we reset, as it begins, every little piece is slowly moving. And then you can see the spreads are slowly happening the entire time. But there we are. Again, so uh, again, that visualization quality was low quality. And again, that's just to make rendering it onto a page very quick and easy. But that's actually where when we're saving those animations, uh, the different uh, parameters that we're using are going to increase the quality. So FPS frames per second, put 30 frames in one second. Uh, DPI dots per inch is what that stands for. 800 is just, it's a high number. So uh, have higher, uh, have a lot more pixels for a particular dot. Uh, and then just some extra arguments. This is more for uh, when you're rendering it. Since we're rendering a video, you need to use a video codec. Uh, so in this case, V codec uh, and then libx264 uh, is what I am using. Uh, but once again, if we were to now take sort of uh, that we've ran through our simulation and we run this, we can see that after our 200 iterations, uh, we started with 62 infected, but after just 200 time steps, uh, almost one third of our population had been infected. And this is why we had the whole stay at home thing. So, you know, some fun simulations. You can play with this. Uh, so you can obviously update it maybe uh, create another variable uh, for like someone who has been infected but has uh, sort of gotten over the parameter. And again, you would use sort of the same format of, uh, you know, if they are red, you know, you can also determine if they get cured uh, and then you would change my status to, I don't know, purple or something like that. And you can represent that. And, uh, so again, this is a, a nice little blanket template for working off of, again, uh, changing colors in an animated scatterplot diagram in matplotlib.